Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. You know, since I've started the channel about a year ago, I've done a lot of videos talking about swim jigs and a lot of videos talking about uh, vibrating jigs like the Chatterbait. Two of my favorite baits, two baits that uh, you can utilize in so many different situations and they catch a lot of fish and they catch a lot of big fish. So they're really good baits to utilize. But it seems like every time I do one of those videos, I get questions from you guys out there wanting to know when I would choose the swim jig over a vibrating jig and vice versa. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about, you know, the, the swim jig versus the vibrating jig and when I prefer to use one over the other. So I'm going to start with the uh, swim jig first. You know, I, I, I can't say enough good things about the swim jig. I think it is such a versatile bait and one that you can pretty much work and utilize in almost any fishing situation. Is it the best bait to utilize in every situation? No, but it is one of those baits that I have tied on year round and I can utilize whether I'm in clear water, dark water, fishing for spotted bass, small mouth, large mouth. It doesn't matter. I can really work that bait anywhere which is one of the reasons I love it. But I do have times that I would prefer to throw a swim jig over the chatterbait style baits. First, it, I, one of the first things I always look, is, look at is watercolor. If I'm fishing very clear water, I prefer to go with the swim jig over the chatterbait just because the swim jig is a more natural presentation bait and I don't want to overwhelm the fish with too much vibration. That's not to say a chatterbait will not work in clear water. It very much does. But for me, I prefer the swim jig when I'm talking about really clear water. The next comes down to uh, the type of water I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing around a lot of wood, I prefer the swim jig because it is an extremely weedless bait compared to the chatterbait. The chatterbait will get hung up. Uh, you know, if you hit a branch or if you hit a stump, it just, it, you've got an exposed hook versus a weedless hook. There's a big difference there. Same thing goes for if I'm fishing around pads. If I've got any sort of lily pads, chatterbait does not come through pads great at all. A swim jig will come through them like a dream. So I like to throw the swim jig if I'm fishing around pads. From a uh, vegetation standpoint, if I'm fishing emergent vegetation, so you've got some sort of, some form of hay grass or a water willow or, you know, uh, buggy whip, stuff like that, very much I prefer the, the swim jig again because, again, it comes through it so much better than a chatterbait. But if I'm fishing submergent grass that is uh, not super thick to the point where it's kind of matting up, then I'll probably almost always go with the chatterbait. The chatterbait is a really good bait for ripping through the grass, uh, and it just seems the trigger strikes as, you know, better, I would say better than a swim jig in that type of situation. So if I've got new grass growth that's only a few inches off the bottom, or I've got just very uh, scattered, sporadic grass, the chatterbait seems to work better in that. But if I've got grass that is reaching the surface or is very thick at that point then I'll, again I'll switch over to the swim jig because I can get the swim jig to swim through the stalks of the grass without getting hung up or caught with that exposed hook. At the same time if I'm fishing say some uh, hydrilla or some milfoil that is starting the top out at that point the swim jig I can work up and over those clumps of grass and drop it back down in some of the holes, swim it for a while and bring it up over that thick stuff. At the same time, you know, something that a lot of people don't talk about is that swim jig, you can almost utilize it like a frog. So if you do have isolated uh, thick mats that are on the surface, you might want to throw the swim jig past it, reel it up to the mat. You can then work it across that mat like a frog. It is very weedless. You can hook up with those fish well, and it allows you to be efficient on that cast. You're not wasting any part of that cast. You cannot do that. You cannot do it successfully on every cast with a chatterbait. So if I've got grass that is really, really thick to the surface, a lot of times I'm going to go back to my swim jig versus the chatterbait. Uh, another time I prefer to, to throw the swim jig over the chatterbait is if I'm fishing open water. 
but I'm let's say I'm fishing isolated targets with open water. So what I mean by that is if I'm fishing uh, like a dock, you know, where I'm, I don't really have any grass or anything that I need to be weedless around, except for the fact that I might be throwing under the dock and skipping that, that swim jig way back under the dock, and I want it to come through there clean. So if you've got a dock with some brush, or you've got some dock with some crossbars, the chatterbait doesn't work as well because you're going to get hung up at some point and end up breaking off a lot of those baits. So in those situations, I like to go with the swim jig better than I would with the chatterbait. The last scenario where I prefer to throw the swim jig uh, almost always over the, the chatterbait is if I'm fishing currented situations. The swim jig does not get affected by the current as much as the, the vibrating jig. With a vibrating jig, depending on how you're retrieving your bait against the current, you may have instances where it just won't vibrate. So if you throw up up into the current, you're reeling back with the current, you will not get nearly as good a vibration out of it as you will if you're throwing cross current or down current and bringing it back. The thing is, a lot of times you don't wanna throw down current and bring your bait back. That's not the ideal presentation. Cross current is fine and throwing upstream and bringing back down with the current is the ideal. But again, a, a, a vibrating jig doesn't work nearly as well under those circumstances. A swim jig, however, works great in the current. Uh, you know, it's probably my favorite river bait just because, you know, again, when you're fishing rivers, there's a lot of cover that's underwater, a lot of things that you can get hung up on with an exposed hook, and you're not going to have that issue with a swim jig. So for me, if I'm fishing current, I really like to go with the swim jig. So, you know, across the board there, it sounds like, I really gave the nod to the swim jig in a lot of different categories. But again, there are a few things that I like the, the chatterbait or vibrating jig better. Uh, you know, one, when it comes to grass, I do think it's a better grass bite or grass bait if you're fishing small grass that's just off the bottom or if you're fishing more sparse grass. And when I say sparse, I'm not talking like strands six feet apart. I'm talking if, if it's just something you can bring a bait through then the chatterbait is a better bait to go with. I also really like to throw the chatterbaits and vibrating jigs uh, around riprap or around, uh, you know, a hard bottom area. So, you know, I can almost work it like a crankbait at times. I'll, I'll let it hit the bottom, crank it a little bit, let it hit the bottom, drag it a little bit. So it's kind of that cross between a jig, a crankbait, and your vibrating jig, which is one reason I really think it shines really well when you're fishing, say, uh, causeways and riprap areas or just uh, hard, you know, rock shorelines. It seems like it's a great bait for that. The other thing that I really like throwing the lipless baits for is if I'm fishing deeper water, uh, whether it's a ledge lake or just fishing, you know, a deeper gravel bar or shell bar, you know, you can throw it out, you can let it hit the bottom, and then you can, you know, burn it a little bit or stroke it. You can do different things with it, and you let that blade really do a lot of vibration, which is going to attract those fish and get you more bites because of the reaction strike. And I don't like doing that with a, a swim jig nearly as much as I do a chatterbait. So there's very much different uh, times and places I like to throw it. Again, if the chatterbait, if I'm throwing fish in dirtier water, I will try to get away with the chatterbait if I can. Both of them are great tools. They are very interchangeable uh, in a lot of instances, but there are times when I do think one outshines the other. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If it was, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for another uh, video coming out tomorrow.